Hi, and welcome to the Flute Talk Podcast, where we talk about all things flute, live here on Patreon. What is Patreon? Patreon is a place for fans like you to come and support creators like us. So why not join us over on Patreon and help us continue to make great content? The Flute Talk Podcast is also brought to you by the Flute Center of New York. The Flute Center of New York has the world's largest selection of flutes. If you need to buy a flute or piccolo, the Flute Center of New York has you covered. With our code TFC at checkout, you can try up to three to four flutes for up to 10 days, have an extended 18-month warranty, and free shipping worldwide. So be sure to go to the website flutes the number four sale.com. So that's flutes the number four sale.com. Flutes for sale.com. Just be sure to use that code TFC for all those perks. And a little bit of that does go our way. Another sponsor is well ourselves. We have a store. If you haven't noticed yet, we have a store over at store.theflutechannel.com. We have some shirts and posters and things like that over at Teespring. So you can definitely go there and get some merch, posters, whatever you'd like that we have. It will be there. You'll probably notice it under our videos. If you're interested, be sure to go to store.theflutechannel.com. That helps us out immensely. So yeah, on with the show. Hey everybody, welcome to the Flute Talk Podcast. I'm Nick. And I'm Emily. How's it going, Emily? Good, how are you? Good. So no theme today, just answering questions. This is the t- podcast that uh, we answer your questions. We do it once, uh, the last Sunday of every month. Yes. And a notable uh, thing that happened this month was we got 100,000 subscribers and the plaque is coming soon. I know, I'm so excited. So that's cool. Yeah. It's not here today, but we'll get so, it soon and you'll see it next month. So the next the goal is a million? <laughs> yeah, 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 a million. A million is going to be... Uh, quite something Why maybe not? in 10 years we'll see yeah the flute is amazing <laughs> the flute is amazing it's like yeah. past couple of years have been like the year of the flutes or the years of the flute yeah. for a lot of people so that's yeah. cool so yeah we had a lot of questions this week uh we're just gonna go right through them right away right now uh jun yang un hopefully i'm pronouncing that right <laughs> how do you refrain from turning in with your flute when playing i mean when you play i tend to tilt it inwards without noticing yeah that's a big We've thing for a lot of people. We've talked about that a few times. The fact that the yeah. um, the rods are heavy, well, heavier than the rest, so it makes the flute want to tilt back all the time. So it's a weight question. Like yeah. the weight is not distributed. No, it's not. Yeah. Properly or it's distributed on its side. Like if you look at a circle and you put a circle on top of the circle on the off side of it, it's going to start going yeah. that way. So the the weight of the flute always goes backwards. So it's normal that this happens. Yeah. You could change your flute position by putting the rod a bit more on top. Mm-hmm. A lot of flutists do that And now. bring your, your head joint more in inside. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Like you have That's to smart. review the whole way you hold your flute yeah. if you do that. It's not for everyone. No. Or you could get a thumb port, which is very useful in avoiding that thing. Because mm-hmm. then your thumb will always be in the same spot. Yeah. And kind of that little shelf will... Um, Gives another anchor point, I guess. Yeah, the anchor point is a bit more... Hmm. sturdy yeah yeah you know and then it might roll less yeah. but it's about how you hold the flute yeah like the three points. when you hold it you have to make sure your fingers are not ho- the fingers that are moving right. the fingers that play the notes mm-hmm. are not involved in holding the flute yeah if hmm. it is then it's because you still need to work on the flute position yeah make sure you're using the fulcrum points but yeah. we have a pretty good video yeah, about true. uh flute huh. posture it's mm-hmm. one of our oldest ones and it's pretty clear like how to hold it and right. it's probably because yeah if it's not very well yeah held <laughs> yeah 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 then it's going to it's a natural tendency it's going to rock back totally yeah and you don't want to you don't want to hold your you don't want to hold your flute with your wrist you know what i mean that's how i always think about it you don't want to have it like this a oh, lot of yeah, people yeah. do like that you don't want to hold your flute with your wrist you know you want to have it as yeah ab- sometimes flutists we tend to unobstructed uh, sorry i was no, trying to find a word sorry, un- i was trying I'm to find so a word sorry. unobstructed no that's good because you made me think of something. It's all good. That's all I wanted to Because when you did that with your wrist, it mm-hmm. made me think also sometimes flutists do that little thing like they're, they want to look like they have wings or something. And they oh, yeah. bring their... Bird position. They mm-hmm. bring their uh, arms up, yeah. their their elbows up. Mm-hmm. And then the wrist also... Yeah, you're becomes, holding up your... You don't hold up with your knee, your elbows or your wrist. It's really... No, you keep your body as much in line as possible. Like gravity just kind of hold your body as it normally does. The elbows go down, yeah. you know, and the... the um, wrists they yeah. try you try to keep them yeah. as neutral as possible you yeah. don't want to have any big range of motion no. because then your fingers won't move as 
well, well and yeah. everything will be more difficult totally and like so the, yeah looking mm -hmm. at yourself in the mirror maybe watch that video about posture and um if you go if you go on youtube and you write um flute posture yeah we totally. should be there yeah exactly should it should be, be up there. there yeah also like the flute i always think like the flute comes to you you don't come you don't go to the flute yeah you know? that's for the neck that's, that's for the neck because that's important too you don't want your yeah i hurt my neck like that ah. as a teenager Ouch. and i still live with the oh boy. with the effects you know wow huh yeah so hopefully that answers your question a little bit do check out that video uh, we got another question here uh, from Laura Ortiz. Do you have any tips for people who got uh, who got back from playing after not practicing for many months? Any advice? Be patient with yourself. Mm -hmm. Totally. Um, you also might be surprised of how uh, good you kind of can come back, but don't let that be also a, a like a stopping position, a stopping point either. Like keep pursuing more because like you don't want to just rely on what you've already did you still want to build up right you still want to build yeah. your technique and practice and it's so true what you're saying like i remember when i would stop sometimes for the summer or a few weeks in the summer to go on vacation then um i would take my flute back and i was like wow my sound is amazing but then the day after it wasn't very often when i didn't play for a while first day super nice sound second day not so good um so like you yeah. maybe you get a bit of ups and downs if, if you're still in the learning years. Totally. And like maybe make your practice uh, structured with sound uh, exercises and then technique and studies and mm -hmm. some pieces and make goals and like take it as a process like you said. You yeah, know? yeah, it's totally true. If you have a bad sound day and it's making you too stressed, maybe put your flute down, mm -hmm. come back later, you know. Yeah, hopefully that helps. Well, I, mean, I agree. We talk about things. Yeah, we talk about all things. Flute, line, and it, here. it all depends where you were when you left. Like I could stop playing the flute for a decade. I would probably remember how to play it. Uh huh. Because like it's ingrained in my brain so much. Because like same with you. Mm -hmm. I don't think you could forget how to nope. play the flute. Sometimes yeah, it could be a month away. And but if uh, you played three months and then you yeah. stop three months, then yeah, maybe it's a bit more. Like, if you do that a lot, depends. yeah. If you do that, yeah, that's a. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. I don't know. Yeah. Just saying. I agree. That's pretty much uh, that. Well, do we have any videos on that? No, we don't have any videos on that. Sometimes it's even good to take a break. Like, I have students that uh, take lessons, let's mm -hmm. say, from September to June, mm -hmm. and then they take two months off in the summer. They don't play that much, but then they come back with a right. freshness. And also the brain does... You know, it's like uh, when you cut some old branches of a tree. Mm -hmm. The brain does that sometimes. Mm -hmm. So if you stop doing something and you had bad habits, mm -hmm. well, you can get rid of those branches a little bit. And yeah. then when you come back to it with a fresh perspective, start yeah. in perspective. Mm -hmm. like oh, I know, fresh start. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. There can be good, uh, good things about stopping for a little bit. That's true. As long as you said, as you don't do that all the time, then yeah. you're not going to get better ever no <laughs> exactly <laughs> i take all my breaks <laughs> <laughs> at the beginning oh yeah, yeah yeah uh what else we got here um mercy wants to know tips for improving sight reading is it better to try and expose yourself to new music as much as possible like daily or weekly to practice this skill or is it better to work for longer periods of time on one piece that uh long work will help you understand how to break down new material both both yeah but if it's really for they both ha both are good but they have different are uh, they both different things like yeah they entirely? have different goals yeah. completely because mm -hmm. if you take a piece and you say i'll work the whole year on it mm -hmm. you know let's say you choose two three pieces that are going to be your competition pieces mm -hmm. and concert pieces and you just play well that's like you're going to build your technique and mm -hmm. your musicality through them and all that stuff but studies every week yeah. you're going to build a lot of sight reading yeah so yeah if you want to build sight reading like get a study book mm -hmm. and learn a, a study a week or st a study every two weeks yeah. something like that or find like really light pieces like uh i even think like if you want to have it to be fun like because sometimes etudes can be a little bit boring oh, because I they find sometimes the oh yeah but some people like i think some people like also because i'm trying to think like maybe as a, as a jazz player could they play through a lot of tunes so they're actually playing tunes that they would you know play on in a in a show yeah, you know so you're learning jazz about just studies stuff. and yeah, there's I know the, jazz uh, the 
the fake book. Yeah, and the all fake that book stuff. is pieces, though. You know, like that's yeah. something you can actually take out there and have fun as but well. But flute studies are amazing. Yeah, some are some, good. Some of them are very good, and mm-hmm. they were composed to build your technique, yes. build your musicality, learn to play in different keys, yeah. uh, pay attention to the dynamics and the articulations and all those things. Yeah, it's to roll back to what you were and saying. And you also yeah. build musicality mm-hmm. through them, like. I have students, all my students do do uh, etudes. I had one who didn't want in the beginning to do etudes and then it took me a while to convince her. And now she realizes, wow, it makes me progress so much to do mm-hmm. them. And they're like, you can find cute ones. Oh, yeah. There's very cute ones. Yeah. A lot and of people like them. And yeah. And people have selected them pretty well and put them in books and stuff yeah. like that. And like we've done that with our stuff as well and all those types of things. But just to roll back to what you were saying at the very beginning of the question is like both of those things, they're different. And you just kind of said what studies kind of incorporate in what studies uh, give to people when they learn them. Yeah. As opposed to pieces, like pieces could be like those three major uh pieces of artwork you're going to work on for the next year you know yeah. you're, you're worried about every stroke you're worried about how you're going to present it how you're going to uh, perform it because it's a in the end it's you're not trying to also even if it's for an exam i would go into the mindset that you're going to perform it like you're playing it on in a hall or in a, a yeah, show and stuff like that because you don't want to get nailed down to what are these three people thinking all the time you want to be like no i've spent a whole year looking at all of this i know where this stroke is i know where this phrase is i know where I'm just going to give it. What do you mean by stroke? Like a stroke. Like I was just visualizing like like how a painter thinks. Like a painter, painter, you know, like and then I just skip to like tone and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. Because also like maybe you want to learn it by heart. Then that's another goal completely. Um, But also if you want to build your um, sight reading, Mm. uh, I think doing some technique like uh, scales, scales and Mm -hmm. thirds, arpeggios, and knowing a little bit of theory so that you, when you approach a piece, you see, oh, this is a scale. Mm-hmm. Th- this is mm-hmm. B-flat major scale. Mm-hmm. This way, when you read it, you're not reading every note. You're reading the, mm-hmm. like you said, the stroke in a way. You're yeah. reading that word or that phrase that, oh, yeah, I know that because I practiced it somewhere else. But to be honest, in studies, they usually use a lot of those types of vocab. Like they use a basic vocabulary a lot. And mm-hmm. so that's that's a very good way to get a better sight reading. Totally. And also, if you can, sight read with friends. Yeah, totally. Get like duos get a group, or, yeah. or trios and like just get little books of yeah. easy stuff or even online. There's a lot of free yeah. things and play through the, through them. You yeah. can even if, if you're three flutists, you can just switch around yeah. and that can be super that's fun. That's true. Like you play, it, you play first flute, then you play second flute, then you play totally. third flute and you can have fun doing that and mm-hmm. develops... Uh, sight reading in another way because when you learn a study you have a whole week when you sight read mm-hmm. on the spot it's something yeah. else also know that you don't need to have your flute with you as well like you can sing while you're in the shower or sing while you're washing dishes or you know you, you but practice that doesn't things. work your sight reading not your sight reading i'm just talking about like because i think also just keeping music in yourself as much as possible you oh, know yeah, like yeah. as well that helps as well too if you also like uh like you know fingering parts in bed with the music if you can't play mm-hmm. that's always a cool tip to have as well Mm-hmm. Or just reading the music without the instrument with yeah. you can help too. Cool. Uh, what else do we got here? Um, oh, okay. I think there was an extra thing to that question. Also, where is the best place to find trill fingerings, especially for the lower and higher octaves? It seems like every teacher has different opinions about the right and wrong trill fingerings. And I'd like to do a video about that. It's That's pretty interesting. Funny. I've never seen oh, that. I have. All my yeah. st- teachers had the same trill oh, fingerings. Oh, no. I've always had like, uh, because I've seen a lot of teachers, like they give a new one and then people jot them down new, like it's a, a new scripture in the in in the book of flute, you know? I've had that at least it's happen 10 times for me. A lot of them are pretty straightforward. Yeah. Some of them are variations on like harmonic trills, like a harmonic uh, fingering and trill. Like a lot of people yeah. do those types of things. Some- but yeah. I remember when I was a teenager, I, I knew there were some new ones that were not on the flute fingering chart on Yamaha's back page or, you yeah, know, yeah. I didn't have a poster like what we made. Like our poster has, I think, you a lot like, of those let's fingerings. You mean third octave. Sure, I think Sometimes that's what they mean. Sometimes you'd use a harmonic mm-hmm. fingering instead of the real trill. Right. Especially if you're doing like a three note thing. Yes. Or, It'd be yeah. interesting to do like what are bad trills and what are good trills. Like there are some trills that people still use, but really like, don't use them because they're really out of tune with each other sometimes like sometimes trills can be you know you, especially harmonic ones they really can be out of tune with each other between the bass note and whatever notes on top you have to do a lot of adjusting 
Well, usually when you play the harmonic, it's lower. Like lower. A third octave harmonic is lower than yes. the real note that you would be playing. So if you were playing an E just before and now you're playing an E with an yeah. E fingering, well, you can also just adjust it mm -hmm. while you're playing to make it sound like the yes. E that, that you mm -hmm. had a few seconds before. Yeah. Like it's just to be aware of uh, what you're doing. Mm -hmm. and, but you I have know. noticed a lot of those things online in particular. I think that's what she said at the end. Um, but I think like yeah. our poster. Our poster is pretty good. It's pretty good. You have all the flute fingerings and the trill fingerings. Need. Yeah. And if you need other ones, just leave a comment and then we'll we'll find it for you. <laughs> but I most of them are there. Probably on flute tunes, they probably have that. But I never checked. But usually what they have is pretty okay. So they right. should... Yeah, I'm not sure. You could check there. I'll have to deep dive in that. Um, David. So he, our yeah. flute, flute poster. Yeah, it's on uh, it's, uh, store.theflutechannel.com. Yeah. So store.theflutechannel.com. Also, I think it's even in the uh, underneath the description as an actual item that you can see underneath this video if you're watching it underneath. Uh, you can get that. Also, I saw somebody wear uh, a little side note. I saw two people buy at the... Uh, Mozart T-shirt, and they sent us a video about it, and they yeah. played uh, the bass flute with their Mozart the T-shirt, so and cool. I think there's even a Mozart pants as well, like the Mozart concerto, the one that you just released. Yeah, that's an actual shirt. Uh, so go and check that out. So cool! It looks so cool in the wild. I want to get ours soon, eventually. But that was oh, so yeah. cool. Uh, so cool. Uh, yeah, I should I should have recorded it with the T-shirt. I didn't uh, think about it. Maybe next time. We'll see if you ever want to do another one. If I do it with a real orchestra. With a real orchestra in the background, yeah. Well, once uh, we, we I'll don't get want to a date dress, this. though. A dress. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. The dress the... one, yeah. That'd be so cool. You, you oh, we should do it. You get a dress with all the concerto on. Who wants a dress pod? Yeah. But... Who wants a dress of uh, Mozart's uh, music on, on your body? <laughs> no, I, I do. I definitely do. Um, David wants to know, how do you believe... Well, what do you believe about the resonance chambers of our body when playing... Are the resonance chambers in our nose, the chest, or does all the resonance happen in the flute or elsewhere? Hmm. Wow. Okay. So, <laughs> you want me to tackle just a little bit of it? Yeah. Okay. I think there's a, a lot going on in particular in the flute. A lot of the stuff is going on there. I would say I would say about 90% is, or 80%, 90 to 80% is happening in the flute. The other part, which is as important, is the, the lips and the breathing and the support and then your ears. Your ears are a very, very like notable part of the flute that you have to kind of pay attention to what it's doing so you can change things on the fly as well. Okay, a lot of people don't but... hear what they're, you know. Like... Yeah, but that's not really answering the chamber, the resonance the chamber, chamber The resonance thing. chamber thing, I just think that really it's just the flute that's making a lot of the resonance, not the body personally. I think you should feel open and comfortable with your breathing, but to say that there's an actual like, too much going on in there as much as the flute is it's, i think it's arguable maybe that's a, a hot take but after reflecting for a long time i think a lot as long as you have good support good breathing you can accomplish a lot well what i but that's think, what i think i my view on it is close to yours but with a little difference yeah so i think that there's probably not that much going on in the resonance in our face mm. and in our especially in the chest i don't see very well how the flute that's because the flute it's a whistle like it whistles when the air hits the the other side of the head joint of the, the not all the air is going inside yeah, yeah exactly so that makes a whistle right so i don't really see how it would resonate that thing would resonate inside your chest it's not like when you're making sound with your voice but it feels so much what, like when you're singing Playing the flute to me is like singing. Mm. It's the same feeling, but better because I have more freedom on my flute than with my voice. Yeah. So I prefer <laughs> playing the flute. But yeah, so, and when I visualize, like, I use the same technique as a singer. And sometimes I even visualize, like, I even imagine and I really feel it that I'm using my chest voice. Mm -hmm. And it does change my sound. So is it just because I place my body differently and the air is going out differently? Right. Is it because... But it works. So in the end, like I'm not a scientist. I didn't study the question, mm -hmm. so I can't tell you. Mm -hmm. But it works. So like in a way, who cares yep. if it's really that or not? Mm -hmm. I'm looking for a result. So if I use... I feel that I'm using the resonance in my mouth, let's say, to play a high note piano. 
and it works it works mm -hmm. maybe it is maybe it isn't mm -hmm. but because you're using you're using quite a lot of different skill sets at that one moment to make that happen yeah but maybe <laughs> you know? maybe by putting my mouth this way inside opening in the back maybe it's just the air is going in a different speed or a yeah, different angle yeah. and i feel that oh it's resonating differently in my mouth maybe yeah. it's not that maybe it's something else yeah. you know yeah, there's we would a, have yeah. to have scans, but yeah. I guess some people have done that. I, I would be interested in reading some studies about it. I yeah, people did. have put cameras. People have put cameras while people were playing in their mouths. I've seen something like cameras? that. Yeah, okay. they put little like my, you know medical grade cameras or whatever, and okay. they see how things are moving. Especially, I think for singers is what they did it for. And I'll have to find that uh, and then put that because that would be cool to make a video about vowel sounds in the mouth because i know a lot of people that i've been interacting with when i was like going to master class and stuff a e i o u you know like oh ah, yeah, like yeah. to feel i wonder if that if anybody can hear the difference between that on like we make clips of you doing that and see if people can hear the difference you know i do that all the time but like yeah i don't know but i guess it's an interesting some, thing there must be some resonance going on because it's so close to our mouth but there's also like but again like the there's a reaction there, happening yeah so and, and like the reaction's happening there remember that the tone of the flute happens at the at the head joint and it doesn't happen anywhere in the in the tone of it it only happens where you put the key it goes you know a yeah. lot of the action happens just in the head joint and where that that the uh, physical reaction happens so it's really isolated there a lot um yeah it's an interesting topic and i know a lot of people have talked about it a lot uh and i think like i said in university of denver i think or one of those places did a study about that and i'll have to do a whole thing about that yeah, with you if some people know yeah if you know about that find the, the information because yeah i think there's so much um that's belief and also sure. so much that's feeling like we feel it we're like it's working so it must yes. be that but totally some mm -hmm. it's like vibrato you yep, know it's vibrato, like vibrato. um i don't feel it in my throat no me i either. feel it more i feel it lower. in my chest but and i've belly. read that when they did Im imaging it was in the throat yeah or they saw movement in the throat but they could also have sensed movement down but in like the stomach I, I would totally, argue and maybe yeah. they saw a movement but it's not coming from there yeah it's because the throat is so open and the air is moving yeah could be involuntary so, for all we know like yeah, but that's to a what certain I mean. degree. Oh, okay, that's what like you mean. If, I if see. the movement is coming from lower, but yeah. they weren't just by having a throat that's uh, open and and um, yeah, our organs are moving all the time. They have a yeah, just by having a throat mm -hmm. that's uh, um, open with no stress, you know, just uh, the muscles like being relaxed. relaxed th yeah, like a relaxed. Then one. maybe uh, it's just moving because the airstream is moving. Yeah. So it's tough to know what's what, you mm -hmm. know, and because it's all invisible. Yes. Yeah, we don't see it. We're only external to our internal machine. So then it's machine. a question of opinions, really. <laughs> yeah. And even when they do a research, like it's always, you always have to keep a little bit of a of a um, critical mindset. In totally. Because it's easy to interpret things, but it's still an interpretation mm -hmm. of facts. Like you would have to have a certain amount of yes. research to really prove it. Yes, I exactly. Think. But I should study acoustics. Yeah, it'd be fun. Uh, so hopefully that answers your question, but we're going to dive deeper in that <laughs> later. Uh, Kunish Besak wants to know, do you have any tips for arranging music with other instruments like violin, oboe, recorder for the flute? Well, you just did uh, Paganini a couple months ago. Yeah. And you rearranged violin to flute. Yeah. How could you, uh, what would you say? It's called a transcription. Yeah. Like it's not really an arrangement. Mm -hmm. It's a transcription. So, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Well, a lot of it, I could just do exactly the same thing as the mm -hmm. violin. When there's two strings, then you have to see, okay, I can't play two notes. What am I going to do here? Mm -hmm. Am I going to sing one and play one? Sometimes it's too contemporary mm -hmm. sounding for, let's say, Paganini. It would sound a bit... A bit out of time. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it would, uh, Jethro Toll meets uh, Paganini, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, like right. for that, I chose to do little arpeggios in the beginning of the bar. Because I thought it sounded a little bit more like what the violin was doing to mm -hmm. do it like that than to try to uh, completely change the melody and make. Because I saw other other versions that were doing it differently, but I felt we were losing the melody completely. Mm -hmm. So listen to it, and then 
you try stuff yeah. <laughs> really yeah. and you're like how can i make it see sound what's in taste what's not as close as i can yeah and uh but like the thing with oboe violin it's all instruments in c so you don't yeah. have to transpose and like single and in single noted instruments sometimes it like the violin goes lower than the flute so you might yeah. have to switch an octave on some stuff mm -hmm. That's like yeah, and some people play the chords like play them really fast like as a as a as like a as a as an ornament or like as yeah. a or as a you know i forget the word but ornament is another yeah, word yeah, for exactly. it exactly like a grace note grace notes and stuff like that so there's a lot of different ways i know i don't think there's much out there again i know there's one video i think or two videos about contemporary composition for flute and that's pretty interesting there's some crossover for stuff you can do with baroque music and classical music and romantic music as well and there's a lot of music out there a lot of public but domain some stuff you can just play it like that and yes even if there's two notes let's say there's thirds and you can't play them you can play the top note it's probably going to sound pretty good anyway mm -hmm. as well. Uh, we'll also get down to your questions here live in the live chat. We're just going through our list of this past week thing, and we'll see if we can get a couple questions done under there as well. Oh, well, maybe we can. Yeah, we can touch one now. Uh, Susan. Yeah, totally. Live with yeah, us. Yeah, yeah. Susan, Susan wants to know, um, any particular composers that you like as an in, at an intermediate level? Yeah, well, the French book is very good for intermediate. Like, there's mm, a couple pieces in there. That's a bit more advanced than intermediate, I well, would say. Well, I don't know what, like, like that's grade, very... Yeah intermediate you know oh well, yeah but i mean like it's a big net but i mean i think um things like Fourier and chaminade and griff's poem those are a lot of things that like high schoolers play in uh yeah but they're still mm. a bit advanced like and there's I don't like know some box sonatas too yeah and handle sonatas are nice intermediate ones as well i would argue yeah what handle about telemon telemon too yeah um what do you think well the Donald Peck book is pretty good for beginner intermediate, you know, like pieces. It's true. Yeah, those uh, show pieces. Um, yeah. Our book, when it comes out in November, we'll, we'll have a lot of intermediate stuff. Yeah, it starts like end of beginner, like, and it it's a pretty wide. Yeah, cast a net. Yeah, the book yeah. that we're finishing right now, it's uh, it starts yeah. not that advanced, but at the end you're in a pretty good place. Yeah. Uh, Fauré has a, a couple Fauré, of yeah. nice, uh, like the um, Sicilian is mm -hmm. pretty nice. It's not too hard. You can find that on flute tunes, I think, and you stuff can like check, that. Those you know, on websites like um, the um, IMSOP. No, but also like uh, Royal Conservatory oh, and yeah. stuff like that. They have I guess. levels with different pieces, yeah, and you can see what you like and what you. Uh, yeah, if you type in Google like RCM flute or RCM woodwind syllabus. Uh, and then PDF, you'll find it. You'll find it right away. Instead of searching through the website, it's very hard to find. Um, yeah, you can but do that. But you're right. Like, there's a lot of cool Baroque stuff, like mm -hmm. Vivaldi and... You're safe with like, Baroque stuff. Sonatas, even some concertos, like Vivaldi concertos. There's mm -hmm. beautiful ones that are intermediate. Yeah. And sonatas, Telemann, mm -hmm. and the fantasies. Yeah. They're I think even Tom Play has a couple like playback tracks, so you can find those things there if you need. Yeah. If you in the, I don't want to date this, but right now we're all in social distancing, so this that those types of services like Tom Play yeah. uh, can really help with uh, keeping up your your chops. Yeah, so you can play with something else, another like l not a person, but totally. like you're you're keeping that up. Exactly. Uh, so hopefully that helps you. Oh, she said thank you. It does. <laughs> That's good. Uh, thanks for the question, uh, Susan. Uh, David wants to know, I've been playing the flute for about four years and I still don't think I'm as good as I should be. I practice a lot, but I still don't think that I'm that good. What should I do? Hmm. Ah, uh, yo, yo, yo. Well, it's very difficult to know because I didn't hear you. Assess yourself by a professional. You know, yeah, that would be take, take one lesson. Yeah, maybe take a lesson, yeah. a couple of lessons. Um, that perspective can can really lead you in a good direction or lead you further on the direction that you're already on and that's yeah. important maybe you need um guidance in your practice maybe you're over practicing some things and under practicing others um sometimes people try to learn like they take a book and they want to do the whole book instead of focusing on one little thing and being able to really master it like there's so many, yeah, I think getting a teacher, maybe getting, I don't know if you got your flute checked in a while. Oh yeah, you just had a, yeah. A I had a student yeah. mm -hmm. um, 
who had a problem with his low register online. Right. So I couldn't just try his flute. No. But I was looking at him and I was like, you know what? I don't really see mm -hmm. that you're doing anything wrong with your mouth or anything right. like that. Mm -hmm. So you should maybe go and have your flute checked. Mm -hmm. And his flute needed the work. Work. Yeah. Like it was leaking yeah. a lot. And now it's a perfectly sealed flute and it sounds like night He's and day. He's so happy. Yeah. So maybe check if your flute needs a yeah. repair because if your flute doesn't... If it's been over a year, you should go and take it in. Yeah. Because you can get a, just a couple pads replaced. It's not going to break the bank. Um, when you have a flute and a flute that's even a Yamaha series flute 200 or 300 series it's worth saving you know 200 bucks 300 because bucks like a year a, to kind of keep it up a professional it's worth it like us yeah with a flute that leaks yeah we're not able to play it yep oh well, it's un impossible so maybe oh thank you maybe it's your flute <laughs> ah that's oh my god odyssey thank ascension you so thank you so much for the hundred dollars that's amazing you can thanks give Roxanne. him a super chat yeah that's so amazing thanks so much so yeah uh what were we on uh, again yeah, I was just saying maybe yeah, check your flute. Maybe take a few lessons. Right. We give lessons. Yeah. I give lessons, but you can find lessons elsewhere too. Yep. Um, totally. You can email yeah. us at info at the flute channel dot com. I know a couple yep. people in the chat are in the studio with you and having lessons with you, and that's really fun. Yeah. And uh, getting a lot of stuff done with uh, a lot of those students. And like I said, it's worth your investment to keep your flute up to par, especially if you're practicing a lot or playing a lot. Maybe every year, take it in and get it get it looked at, you know, because yeah, pads are, uh, pads, uh, you know, in replacing, it's, as long as you're keeping everything nice and and even on your technique and not bending too many uh, metal keys, usually it's just going to be the pads and it's not going to cost too much for you. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, what else do we got? We have a couple more questions here. I think I saw one here. I don't, I think it's Chelsea. Oh, yeah, there it is. What's the hardest lesson you've oh. had to give to someone? That's a funny question. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, that's a bit... Uh, we'll think about that one. <laughs> I, I um, really like my students. I don't really have hard lessons. Yeah. Uh, Fafali uh, wants to know, my sister is a beginner flutist. Do you have any websites to help her become a better flutist? Our channel is really good for that, Falafi, or Fafali. Sorry, I can't see it this far. Or you go on Musogy, M-O-U-S-O-G-Y dot com. We have an online course, uh, video course that you can download uh, all the videos uh, for beginners. I think that's the best option yeah, it's the for best a option. beginner because they're... It's like really guiding you from it's really guiding you from yeah. nothing to yeah. and building things um, gradually. Yeah. And there's like a lot of explaining totally. explanation in the video. Yes. And it's like even if you don't know anything, you don't know how to read music, you right. don't know rhythms, you don't know anything. It's all in there. A little bit of theory, just enough to understand what's going on in that book. I mm -hmm. don't overload it either because mm -hmm. I think when you put too much, you can just make people confused mm -hmm. you have to know how to build knowledge yeah yeah uh if you don't want to check the website go and check on our channel the first flute lesson that's actually the first flute lesson in the program and if you feel that that's something that your um sister would like go and yeah. see the price is still uh discounted still uh for corona and for the holidays too we're going to keep it the same price as we've had it since uh opening just for people so that everyone can uh, have a chance at that and we've had such a great 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 response and we thank everybody who's gotten the the book and left yeah. reviews and has uh, talked all but good things about it and the second book which will be the intermediate which will be the the second step to the program is coming out in november and that's really yeah. exciting as well too it's so exciting to know that people uh -huh. buy the book everywhere like we've sold yeah, yeah. in different places yeah it's great and it's like wow people are mm -hmm. learning the flute everywhere it's so fun it's true uh chelsea wants to know i don't know if anyone is in marching band here but if you are what is the best way to maintain good time while marching and not getting out of breath um i was in marching band for quite a long time so um make your breaths part of the music so you know when it's coming up so that way you can really kind of time everything and really develop a a groove so you don't get surprised because when you're marching and you have to stay in step and um breathing can be uh you can get out of breath you can really get really really tired when you're marching of so timing those breaths can really help your body and help your mind on uh, delegating your energy and also like take uh you know if you're really out of breath sometimes i faked for a bar or two and uh for all flutists no one can hear one flutist out that's not playing so if you want to yeah. take a breath take a breaths and take time and uh that's okay 
Yeah, because uh, you're yeah. moving yeah. and playing, yeah. and sometimes it's warm. Yeah, and must be isolation, good. roll stepping. If your marching band doesn't teach you roll step, they should do that because roll stepping keeps you uh, from moving too much on the body, and that's basically like landing on the heel of your foot and then lowering down, like basically using full foot to march. Um, and that's that way you don't you isolate tire yourself, yourself as no, much. Uh, I don't say the tiring, not the tiring part, but just keeping yourself isolated from moving around too much your body while you're playing. Because if you're just walking, you're you're kind of moving. Yeah, around. and then your flute is not as stable. That's and right. Then, then yeah. you have a lot of other every instrument will have that problem. Yeah. And then you're gonna get more out of breath, yeah. uh, of course, because like everything's moving. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. But that's what I did. I, I actually wrote in and memorized where I was breathing, so I knew like what each phrase was and all those types of things. So uh, hopefully that helps your question. Um, yeah. Elf wants to know, um, it's a beginner question. When doing legato octaves, how do I make the higher notes at the same volume as the lower notes instead of louder? And how do I, uh, cleanly drop to the lower octave? Okay. Sorry if I'm talking off mic, if you need to hear the question. Well, well, well. In a way, I think it's kind of normal that the higher octave would be a little bit louder. Do you agree with me? Mm -hmm. Like if you sing, you go, ah. Yes. The mm -hmm. second note will be a little louder. Yeah, so you have to compensate, yeah. Um. So, yeah. Then the other thing is um, to change octave. Do as if you were singing. You can put your hand on your belly. Just where your um, ribs get together, you know, in that area. And then you do, ah, uh, like the, pretty much your lowest note to your highest note, like, Oh, and you'll feel the muscles moving in a certain way and then oh, in the other direction. That's what you have to do for the support when you change octave. It's the exact same thing with your, your belly muscles. And then you can do a little bit with your chin. So when you're in the lower register, it's going to be a little bit more back. And then you bring it a little bit forward in the high register and you bring it back. In mm -hmm. the lower register. Mm -hmm. Only the lower lip, the upper lip doesn't need to move. So that would be my... Mm -hmm. My... Um, tip? Tip, yeah. Cool. Exactly, thanks. Wonderful. Uh, Silverlay wants to know, and I think even Derek wants to know, they both said the exact same questions, which is funny. Uh, are there any brands of flute that you guys recommend over another? Um, and what brand of flute do you recommend for an intermediate flute player? Well, we have a whole playlist of... Flute Center of New York reviews, I think eight or nine of them, of different flutes from beginner to very advanced. Um, take a look at them. Listen to what Emily has to say about them. But like brands, like to say one's better than the other, obviously like there are name brands that are all kind of equal, I say in my own in my own uh, there's way. There's a lot of good flutes now. Yeah, there's at least over a dozen good flute brands out there, um, even in the intermediate mar market. You know, Trevor James, Yamaha, uh, these are in no particular order. Um you know, and uh, Powell, Sonari, Haynes, Powell. Uh, Sankoy, uh, Muramatsu. Um, we tried Yamaha. some Azumi. Azumi. They were good, like yeah, Dizal as well is a very reputable, very good brand as well. <laughs> um, those are all good. And you can go to the Flute Center of New York on their website, Flutes for Sale. And you can use our code TFC or call them and talk to them and give our code. And they will help you and they'll let you... Uh, um, try up the three to four flutes uh, at home for yeah. up to 10 days and you get an extended warranty and yeah. a lot of cool stuff and we get a commission off of that yeah so thank you to everyone who used our code tfc yeah. and yeah like i would say find your price yes and then order Ooh. like four yeah different ones and then see if you fall, fall in love with one yeah. of them exactly. try them play them have someone listen yep um, record yourself record yourself or just how you feel reflect yeah when you try um, do a little bit of everything, like legato, staccato, low register, high register, loud, soft. You know. Yeah. You wanna, you don't wanna just play a piece yeah. that's only one style. Like do different things, play, s play fast, play slowly, mm -hmm. different things, so that you can try the whole range of. Yeah. Food. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, exactly. Try not. Yeah, and like thanks for flutes in New York, and we've had a lot of people who've done that already, and um, just be sure to uh, contact them. They're all flutists there. They're they're they. Uh, really have it down to a science there and they have the largest collection a largest selection of flutes so you're not going to miss out on any choices yeah yeah so yeah hopefully that answers your question a little bit um 
but we'll talk more about flutes. I know that's one of our biggest, hardest hitting questions is that it's like intermediate flute, what flute to I choose and stuff like that. I understand because it's a big investment. And so people don't want to make a mistake, you know? Mm. Yeah, exactly. But then it's about also maintaining it, mm -hmm. like we said before. Exactly. Keep a little bit of your budget for repair. Yeah, exactly. Over the years. Yeah. And like, or like, always think about that, that you're going to have to keep it up. Yes. And like, I have a Yamaha, it's lasted me 20 years almost, over 20 years. You've yeah, had, had a flute, flute for over 20 years, Prima Sanque. Oh, yeah. 22 years At now. Least. So, you know, flutes can last forever. So, uh, as long as you get a good brand like Yamaha or Muramatsu, they're all going to be, they're all going to have a very long shelf life and they're all easily repairable some of them are a little bit more expensive because some of them have a little bit different style of of of, uh, of um pads and system but that's really kind of uh rare-ish like most technicians can repair those things once they need to get replaced the pads it's mostly the pads that always have to be replaced and the cork if there's a synthetic yeah. cork or cork cork yeah, <laughs> yeah. uh anish wants to know i've had uh i have a hard back and neck pain I tried with your lessons on uh, to be good on posture, but one day after I had lots of pain. Oh, that's sad. I'm so sorry for that. Do you think I should continue or try uh, or to try um, or should I maybe buy an ergonomic flute? Ergonomic flutes are very interesting. There are some flutes now that have like a curved head joint that curves down so you can have your hands even lower because people can't, oh. people can't uh, reach out. And you can buy that head joint separately and then you contact the the maker and you tell them what type of flute you have and they'll make the specific um fitting for that flute so if you say i have a yamaha 300 uh they know the measurements the they know the barrel measurements and they'll make that flute i can't remember which company so does it some flute makers do make them but like you read it fast <clears throat> so where where's the pain back and neck okay and she watched our posture video so he or she sorry uh, anusha must be back know. and neck Maybe think of keeping your chin in. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Upper back, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Upper back, yeah. Chin in. And also the... How do you say that? Um, this part. Mm -hmm. Omoplat. How do you say that? I forget the English word this part the back uh no, the wings the back wings <laughs> yeah kind of the wings yeah. keep them the together. shoulder blades shoulder, shoulder blades. blades thank you yeah. so much so the shoulder blades down and together and like try and exercise you keep your shoulders down and your shoulder blades down and together and then you raise your hand by and you keep that so you don't raise your shoulder at the same time as you raise your arm in the up you know and you'll feel how the arm can be moving right. without bringing that up. And then when mm -hmm. you bring your flute, you keep that same stability in your back. Yeah. So, yes. But sometimes you might be doing something that you're not noticing. Even though you watch the video, you know what has to be done. Maybe there's something you're doing that you're not noticing. You can also try an exercise on the wall. You yeah. go on the wall... You put your back to the wall. Oh, the wall and exercise, yeah. You mm -hmm. put your head a little bit on the left. You bring your flute to yourself. Right. And yeah. But like maybe an ergonomic flute. I don't know a lot about ergonomic it. Ergonomic flutes are, yeah. I would like to kind of get some, I would like to review them because they're kind of cool. Um, they're, maybe yeah, also they're the custom. arms are too high. Yeah. Like keep your, your elbows down. Down, yeah. Yeah. But there sometimes a teacher, a good teacher could look at you or yep. even like, looks funny, but I was thinking... I had a super good uh, Pilates instructor. Okay. And I was thinking, I'm pretty sure a flutist would go to her and say, I have pain. She would probably notice what's wrong with the posture. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because she's uh, she knows so much about posture, so muscles, everything. So I was thinking she could be even better than, than some flute teachers that sometimes right. have no... Some people have had n no pain. Mm. It was so natural for them. They just took the flute, played, and then they don't really pay attention mm -hmm. because they didn't know that struggle in their right. life. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Huh. Cool. So we'll answer a few more questions. Um, oh, uh, Celeste wants to know, have you ever experimented with Alexander Technique or Constructive Rest? I don't know what Constructive Rest is, but Alexander Technique, I'm, I know about it and I've seen it. 
done. I've uh, read books and yeah. I've seen a big video that was made by an Alexander yes. Technique. Uh, I think I've seen the same video. It's pretty good. It's on yeah. YouTube, I think. Yeah, it's with on YouTube. An actor, and it's pretty instructive, like yeah. how to move, how to walk. Like mm -hmm. it really, it's interesting. It's how interesting. How to sit. Yeah. And it's I've another tool in the I've toolbox. Had, like, conferences on it and stuff like in okay. university wow. some okay. alexander technicians yeah. came and gave us some yeah yeah uh well i've had a lot of those types of yeah. things like feldenkrais mm -hmm. and all that stuff yeah but what helped me the most was a very like it's all about the teacher i think not the method that yeah use, it's all about the teachers a so person true. who's very good at what they do and i had a pilates instructor who was just so smart and knowledgeable she did mm. pre-med and mm -hmm. she knew everything about muscles and posture and she did so many different types of of uh, exercises in her life and like she was just a teacher she, yeah. so she would look at someone and, and boom. notice yeah. things so like personally i think it's more the teacher than exactly what which technique yes, you choose of course just having someone who's it's true yeah mm-hmm in my life, it has been that, yeah. you know, very often. The mm -hmm. person made the thing interesting. Or exactly. That, you know, or mm -hmm. uh, easy to understand. Or sure. make you feel it. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. that's a mm -hmm. I think it would be interesting for us to do a couple of videos about, like, exercises or posture things. But, yeah, I yeah. have to think about that a was good a way to make it clear on video. And that was sort of go to these questions. I was actually going to go to those. Like, uh, Katie Mon wanted to know how to practice efficiently and still have fun. And also... How to warm up the flute to play high notes nicely. Okay. Do you, you think know. you have to warm up the flute to play high notes? No, I don't think so. I don't think so too. The the note like the flute's built to play a note. Yeah. Plays a note. You don't need to warm up your flute. No. Some people feel that they need to warm up. Like yes, themselves. warm up, of course, sure. Yeah. Because remember it's it's a metal. It's gonna get cold real fast after you stop playing. Like obviously, you know. if you're playing in s in a very cold place and like yeah. it's tough, but for other reasons. Yeah, for it's other not reasons, really yeah. Sure. It's just because you're blowing hot in something cold. It's mm -hmm. going to make a lot of condensation and it's going to be more difficult. But you don't need to warm your flute up. Mm -hmm. Maybe you feel that you need to warm up because... But like after a while, I'm pretty sure you take your flute, you can play any note. You don't need to warm up. Yeah, well, exactly. I know that. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, there you go. And like I can play... But yeah, maybe you feel you need to warm up. Mm -hmm. uh, if high notes are difficult, maybe do a couple of um, harmonics. I think we have a video that about That can make harmonics. you feel, yeah, more secure about your or notes. I think it's in one of our video about sound. I talk about harmonics. Like, practicing harmonics is pretty good because, like, once you get to the high notes, take the same feeling and just play the real fingering and it's going to be easier. Yeah. Mm. So that could help you. And, um, yeah, but there your you food go. doesn't need to mm -hmm. be warmed up. Mm -hmm. Just maybe yourself. There you go. Maybe remembering how to support mm -hmm. how to open the mm -hmm. the mouth inside like keep some space between the teeth and the sure. back those types there of things there you go and uh, what was your other question i think it was just about how to uh, practice with fun like how to practice it, it most efficiently and still have fun you know like bore you know like if you're playing boring technique stuff and try to make things more fun and more enjoyable i don't know i think uh, what do you think i like practicing boring stuff i don't um, i hate it I try to practice a little bit for me, like if it's like Machiavellian or something that's really like boring, I really just isolate. I try to do, if it's a long exercise, I do a little bit of it that day and then uh, just do that. That way, and then the next day I do the other part of it and the other part of it. And then maybe at the end oh, of the week, I put it all together. That way I focus less on that stuff and focus more on the musicality of it, of, of stuff. That's my advice. I see it as uh, almost like a... Um meditation thing okay and like a daily thing that you do again mm -hmm. and you build but i don't even have time to do that anymore but mm -hmm. when i was a student and i would do 45 minutes of boring technique wow. technical exercises right. yes that i didn't find that boring mm -hmm. but i it was kind of a, i saw it as a time for myself i guess mm -hmm. you know uh but i guess a good way to make it enjoyable is to make give yourself attainable goals so that you have a feeling of achievement when you're done sometimes i feel people put goals that are too far away and it's good to have very far away goals but put 
like a daily goal or a weekly goal mm-hmm. that's attainable right so that you have a feeling of accomplishment and that's where the that's more than fun because fun is a is a short term thing but mm-hmm. accomplishment that's really feeding your soul like i don't know how to say that yeah totally. i guess it feeds you know it feeds oh i done something oh i'm getting better i'm having a feeling that you're moving forward in yeah. life and if you your goal is too far like a piece that's super difficult or being able to play like a a pro in a month like you're gonna just be disappointed mm. i think it's more than just fun it's that feeling that you're moving forward sometimes we totally. forget all that we've learned and we only see what we have to do st- but sure. like sometimes look back and yeah but I like also like segmenting your practice and saying mm-hmm. I'm gonna do this and then that and then yeah like you said not spend too much time either yeah because you want to go technique. and play the fun stuff like you want to have you want to reserve I I don't know I think you should always reserve a lot of time for the fun stuff yeah yeah I think don't have to overdo it but it's like why are you even doing it you're doing it because you want to play the Bach piece or you want to play the Carmen fantasy or you want to play you yeah. know it's that joy but that other thing that you're doing makes it easier to play yes. those things totally. so you're building oh, your no, skills we, yeah if you, you know it that it's going to do stuff yeah building thing then it's totally it's more motivating but maybe it might it might help you thinking of it that way if it doesn't do a pomodoro yeah. you know the yeah pomodoro, pomodoro. you give We've yourself said, yeah let's say you say I've, I've i don't really like this exercise i'm gonna do 15 minutes of it and then after 15 minutes you give yourself something that you like i don't know you watch a little show that's funny or you go for a walk or you eat a piece of chocolate. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Something that makes it, I'm going to do that. But yeah. also maybe if there's exercises that you don't like, there might be other exercises right. that are as efficient that you will like. Yeah. Like Then again, a good teacher should be yeah, able to. Yeah, a good teacher can lead you to organizing your time. Not better, but just more enjoyable is yeah. what you want to think about. But um, yeah, yeah, and you don't want to do like the whole Tafanel and Gobert every day. I would not like that. Like I like doing a little bit of technique, like you, but I'm not not gonna do two three hours of that either. No, 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 no. Of course not. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's something. that's a really good question. I love going and reflecting on that. It's really good. I saw a question up there in the comments here live. Um, somebody wanted to know what, how different is the Baroque flute? We have a Baroque flute in the background. Would you like to show the Baroque flute and show the fl- and then play the flute? Oh, you got it out. Yeah, I put it out right there. As you see, we put a lot more new flutes in the background. These are all playable flutes, a Sakokachi flute, an Irish flute, a couple of recorders. Uh, I'm not even able to get a fl- uh, sound out of the Shakuachi. Oh, yeah. It's that'll be a fun. So that'll, be, that'll be great if you can learn it in under an hour. We're going to do that soon. Right. I need a teacher. Th- there's a video series that they gave us. So It's a great Sakokachi flute for beginners. Very, very nice. I'm very bad at the traverso. So this is the traverso. <laughs> So there you go. Yeah. Yeah. At one point, I was practicing it a little bit every week and I was getting okay. Yeah. And yeah, maybe I should do a little challenge. Sure. And then there's like um, the flute, you know, learn, learn, learn it. Learning in under an hour. That's the big thing right now. What could be cool is if you got one, we could do little duos. Yeah, together. I'm trying to find one, but I think we can even play duos with the Irish flute with that one. But this one is pitched. tuned lower, so oh. I would have to get a new head joint. Oh, really? That's, that's tuned to 440? No, that's, that's that Four. one is tuned to 415 or something yeah, like that. Yeah, that's like tuned the baro- lower, yeah. 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 So, yeah. but I think someone could make me a head joint that's yeah. a bit shorter. If you're a head joint maker out there, send us the head joints. <laughs> 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 Please. Uh, the flute channel can't be bought, but uh, you can give us free head joints. That's cool. <laughs> yeah okay um and what else i saw some oh how to choose um pieces for auditions that's a cool question uh we get it a lot but i recently thought about it and i thought i'll kind of just say my little thing about that right now is uh try to find what the standard uh audition pieces are for places like mozart exposition of mozart g major concerto that you've just played is a really really uh, important one and you just have to play usually just the first movement or just the exposition which is the beginning and then some uh orchestra audition pieces like if it's for an audition for um an orchestra find out what the if there's a list find out if there's lift if there isn't 
try to find out what other places have given as lists so that you can kind of reflect on that and find the pieces that they're kind of looking for all the time. You don't want to kind of shock them a bit too much because it's blind and also... Yeah. But yeah. I think... What do you think? Yeah, like you said, a lot of auditions already have a list. Like professional orchestras, you learn what's on the list. But if it's for university, sometimes they have like... It's a bit more um, vague. Like you'll have one piece from the Baroque or classical period and one piece from the Romantic or 20th century, you know? Mm-hmm. And that's pretty vague. But try to find something that you're going to be able to play well. Don't go too much above your your level. Yeah, yeah. So that um, you can play well. <laughs> it's not about like... Yeah, it's not just the piece. Like it's it's can you master it? And mm. then um, some pieces wow. are difficult, but don't sound that difficult. Some pieces are not that difficult, but do sound difficult. Mm-hmm. So maybe also like there's some pieces that uh, fall in the fingers a bit easier. Mm. But a good teacher again could help you with finding something that's right on for you with the level and everything. There you but go. Yeah, you want a challenge, but not yeah, too much. Not either. too much either. It's and like, true. listen to to the piece that you're learning a lot. And yeah. Yeah. That's it. And take like also learn it. Um, if you're not super advanced, start a few months before. Yes, totally. Like a, a month before the audition, you should know it pretty well. That's yeah. what my high school piano teacher. She would always say like a month before the concert or competition or whatever. You have to know it. Yeah. This way you're, you get there, you're like, ha, ha, ha. That's it. For sure. <laughs> like practicing Try to know as much a, in advance as possible. Yeah. Being ready is a very good antidote yeah. to anxiety and yeah. stress, like track and yeah. all that stuff. Also ask, a, ask an expert or ask the local flutist in town, uh, you know, get a lesson with them, find out what people are looking for in terms of audition material in your town or wherever you're going to be doing that stuff. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. even the place where you want to go and study uh, if you know the teacher, you can even maybe have yeah. a lesson with that person. Can exactly. Idea? Yeah. Good little exactly. investment and then. Totally. Exactly. Uh, a couple more questions. What a great podcast so far. It's pretty amazing. Um, what? Oh, so I watched your how to play airy, uh, how to n- how to not play airy, and I can't really understand it. And then somebody said, <laughs> apparently your very bad is not the same as a normal very bad. Uh, they're kind of close, like airy sound is airy sound in a lot of ways and i know that video uh the airy sound videos a lot of people are watching it lately and um what would you elaborate more on it if you had to kind of add a little amendum or addendum uh, addendum yeah <laughs> addendum yeah yeah addendum i think is it amend uh, amendum or addendum An uh, addendum is when you add something at the end right like addendum a addendum b oh addendum. that's so true yeah gosh. but like maybe you mean an amendment no not an amendment because it's not know. the government but yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh to be honest i'm not exactly sure what i said in that video <laughs> it's been a while i've too, done yeah. a couple about sound like i've it's done true. one about airy one is called something else one is yeah. called embouchure like so i'm not sure exactly which one i said what right i think maybe i should make a playlist i don't know if there's a tone so playlist so i'll have to find that yeah. I don't know what what don't you understand. Maybe that would help me. Yeah. Just yeah. If let you us can know. Be a bit if more precise know, yeah. and tell me. Yeah. I don't understand this concept. Then mm-hmm. I could re-explain it. Right. Well, uh, we'll go to another question, but I'll try to follow back on that. Uh, Dominic wants to know what is the best exercise to practice double tonguing. We have a couple of double tonguing videos, at least two. Yeah. Well, yeah. the. I know we have a recent one that has a couple of exercises. Yeah. And the five-minute warm-up for Flutes in a Hurry has double tonguing in it. And yes, but in our new book, there's a... Oh, that's... There's, we teach double no, tonguing. Double tonguing like nothing. Yeah, it's going to yeah. be crazy. Um, I don't know if you have the Cavalli book number one. Cavalli, yeah. Cavalli. Robert Cavalli. It's a study book. At the end of the book... You can find book, it on Amazon, I think, yeah. In the last pages, like not the last pages, like maybe the... Check in the last 10 yes. pages on that bo- of that book somewhere. You have two pages of double-tonguing exercises. They're pretty good. I send them to a lot of students, you know. I use yeah. them a lot for my students. Um, and when you practice it, start slowly. Learn the whole, like, learn a little part each week. And then when you're done, go back and do it faster and faster every time. And, yeah. Mm-hmm. 
But our videos about double tonguing have exercises and they're pretty good exercises. Mm -hmm. And then um, when you do um, pieces, let's say you learn a Baroque sonata. Mm -hmm. There's 16th notes. Yeah. Playing, play them in double tonguing and um, practice the parts that are in 16th notes as an exercise. That can also be a way to build technique is totally. to find those little spots and practice them like a technique exercise. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So hopefully that helps. One or two more questions. I saw one that was very good. Um, where was it? Oh my, there it is. Does it, Susan wants to know, does it matter what syllables you use for double tonguing, i.e. dugu or taka? Okay. Uh, dugu. It does. I've never heard of dugu. I use I heard daga. Of daga. Daga 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 daga. daga. Yeah. Dugu dugu daga daga. It Which one do you use? Hashtag us, uh, dada. What is it? Dudu. What is it? <laughs> dugu or daga. <laughs> yeah. Well, it all depends because like vowels it's are true. used to change the color of the sound. So if I'm going oh, I'll go daga 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 da, and then ooh, I'll go dugu dugu do. I guess you know. Mm -hmm. Um. So. Um. Yeah, so if you use the taka, you're going to get something a little bit more mm -hmm. percussive. Mm -hmm. If you use daga, it's going to be more of a legato type of tonguing. Like, I know it's not legato, but like you can have something tongued that's a bit more in the legato spirit and something that's more in the staccato spirit. So, yeah, it's going to change. Yeah, of course, if you go taka taka ta or daga 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 da, you're not going to get the same sound. Mm -hmm, exactly. Yeah. yeah. But I don't really think about daga, dugu. I just, my tongue does that thing. Mm -hmm. The D and the G or the T and the K. When you do that, it, <laughs> is it more like that, you mean? <laughs> like, I feel it like that. Because it's, it's like... Taka, taka, taka. I Anyways, always have that burn in my image. Yeah, it's a podcast. But if you're watching on the visual side of it over on YouTube where you can uh Because we don't see visualize things the same, maybe. Yeah, exactly. Because I see it always as like, uh, not always, but... For like staccato stuff, it's really touching the in-between point of where your teeth meet and where your gums meet at the top of your mouth. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And you're just, it's more about the release. It's more about, uh, I don't know. I think you should always let, the release part is automatic, I always find. But the, the actual action of actually getting there is what you should really work on the most. Oh, yeah. I For feel. me, it's the opposite. Oh, yeah? No. Oh. Yeah. When I wow. figured out that it's the release that makes the sound Because the release, come, yeah. Then my tonguing became better. Because I found that a lot of people who thought like that sometimes, maybe it's just experience from other people that I've been around because maybe you got it a little easier and a lot faster, is uh, a lot of people got confused when they did it that way and they got they kind of overthought it and then their articulation suffered a little bit or they got more tired. But I don't know. That's just maybe a couple people. I don't know. Like, I don't think it's the majority. But that's a very interesting way of looking at it. Yeah. I don't know. That's cool. But... Um, and last question. We're going to do one more. This was great. Uh, Twinkle or Twin Leaf 23. Hopefully I'm saying that right. Are you more of a purist when following composer slash editorial instructions, such as a pa Paud with Bach edition or more flexible like Galway with Poulenc? Oh, okay. So I didn't know that Paud so made Galway's, a Bach edition. A Bach has a Bach sonata. We should. Yeah, there's a good. Bach, Bach has a Bach sonata. Bach yeah. has Bach sonatas. I know, but... Buck wrote flute sonatas? I know that. Yeah. yeah and... I was saying Paud has a back edition. I didn't know about it. I guess so. I, if it's Ur text, then it means that it's following the text. Yes. And if there's anything added, it's going to be with little... It's not going to be a full... Let's say he puts a legato okay. that he chose to add. Then there's going to be little dots instead of a full right. line and stuff like that. Um, Is but it, then, yeah. you know, during Baroque period because composers didn't write slurs it was a a lot of the interpretation when, what times? Baroque, what times? Oh, baroque yes sorry I didn't a lot that of the interpretation was up to the to the musician mm -hmm. playing it sure. the composers were not as controlling as they mm -hmm. are now mm -hmm. it was more like here's your piece right. do it was more like jazz now okay say, you know and so because there's no articulation doesn't mean you shouldn't put any. Like right. you should add your own or find an edition that has some if you right. don't want to add your own. And But does that mean, that if you want to just quickly say to us, because maybe I'm kind of like... And I didn't know that... Uh, maybe they're not editions. Maybe they're recordings is what he's talking about. Because 
okay. when Bach plays a recording because I know Poulenc, Galway didn't uh, edit it. It's uh, yeah. just Poulenc and and the Boast. I think it, it was the Boast and Poulenc that, uh, or was it Ron Paul? One of those hung out with. No, it was supposed to be Ron Paul who was supposed to premiere it, but then the Boast had to premiere it. Okay, I don't know something like that. that. I don't know. Correction if I'm wrong, but maybe they're talking about recordings because that could be it. Because he says in the second question, he says, like, Galway uses loads of vibrato, for example, in the Poulenc second I'm movement. I'm not sure that Paud follows back that well, no. to be honest. That's like, what I was saying. I was thinking as well. Paud is not a... Um, he's not a period no. uh, player. Like, he's not playing on a traverso. Right. I don't think he's trying either. And it's totally fine. I'm not yeah, judging yeah. No, 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 one way or another. But I don't think... If you really want to hear a more... Um, a version that's going to be more to the text and how people probably played it in in the period of back maybe uh, listen to people playing on like instruments Kuiken? from those times like Kuiken yeah Kuiken and I people like that yeah. Kuiken K U I J E N K O K E N oh my gosh yeah. there you go uh so Oops. you'll yeah. see it's completely different cuz like Paud he vibrates in and his sound is very metallic and very right intense mm -hmm. and the sound of a traverso can't do that so a lot of people who even play on modern flutes and play baroque music yeah. they're going to put way less vibrato mm -hmm. they're going to try to have a sound that's a bit more um with, with less deep you know less eh, you know and he doesn't really do that by well it's my opinion yeah i agree a little bit as well too yeah. i think so are he's there also taking his own personality into it it's totally fine like there's different ways of thinking about those things. You can think Bach really wanted that flute sound. Or you can think maybe if Bach knew this new flute, he would want it like that with vibrato. Yes. So who knows? Yeah. If you like Pied's interpretation, it's totally fine. Right. I like it too. Yeah. And I can enjoy his interpretation and I can enjoy a more um, true to the time interpretation as well. For Galway... I never heard his uh, his uh, Poulenc. No, okay. no. <laughs> so I don't know, but he tends to play things his own way. Um, I'm in the middle for that stuff. I try to be respectful to the composer, but also I try to see music more and more as. Um, yeah. Why would I even need to play something if I can't even put a little bit of myself into it? Okay, you know? sure. Yeah. And like no one really knows what was in the head of the composer. Right. So I tried to just make it as nice as I can. Yeah, sure. I don't overthink. Yeah, just uh, for reference material, you know, it's good to listen to different people. I find like, well, who do you think like out of the silver flute is playing? Like people play regular flute has kind of gotten Bach okay. Who do you think? Do you have anybody you've ever listened to other than period instruments? Because I have one. Oh, there was a recording that I had, a Naxos recording. The guy was amazing. It was on a, I forget his name. Oh, okay. I well, when you do, I'll my, yeah. uh, CDs. Oh, and we'll tweet it. Or we'll tweet it. Or we'll put it on the. Uh, it was your, whatever, so yeah. beautiful, and I didn't know his name. Like he's not that known because like he was from I don't know where, but yeah. Yeah, and I, I think Peter Lucas Graf plays Bach pretty well and he's on YouTube uh, he has I think his whole Bach album online on YouTube and you can listen to it and he's a quite a, an old guy <laughs> but he plays really well and he has a, a good understanding about Baroque I think he was kind of really invested in Baroque music a lot for his life so as uh, but listen to him he's pretty but good him too he has a very uh, sound depends like uh, yeah. what surprised me when I listened to his Bach recordings a long time ago it was the exact opposite of how I kind of how he plays as other he types normally, yeah. of music. Yeah, so yeah, interesting. Yeah, yeah. But like, I like listen uh, to period instruments. I too. like Paud too. Like, yeah. even sometimes when I give lessons and a student is learning a Bach sonata, I send his uh, yeah his and version lot, on YouTube. I yeah. send them a link and I'm, listen to that. It's nice, you know. And there's a lot of great uh, players on Instagram and stuff like that. There's a, so much opportunity now to see what creative people are doing in terms of. Uh, creativity and also just the sound of the flute because right now we live in an age that there's not there's like the american tone and the french tone but there's also like a lot of in between and a lot of outside that world of people playing a lot of different ways of flute it's like that flutist who plays uh piazzolo who passed away a couple years ago she has a flute tone that uh was kind of uh beyond a lot of people that, yeah yeah 
she was doing a lot of stuff like that things but yeah. uh we'll be doing bach eventually soon we have we've done some just practicings with bach but we'll do some bach music videos as well with some harpsichord or whatever how we when we've done like solo flute bach i think at least uh, we didn't record no it. we didn't record the bach yeah. uh sweet we did it as uh, just yeah. practicing so yeah everybody thanks so much this is wonderful we do this at the end of every uh the last sunday of every month so we'll see you in november oh, the person who have uh, had a question oh, precise or question no they no? just kind of said something else after I, I, okay. I was looking but it's okay um but leave your questions if we didn't answer any of your questions in life please leave the question again down in the comments we'll try to put it on our list for next month and we'll definitely get into that as well and if you want to have uh flute lessons with emily you can email us at info at the flute channel.com right, did i say right info at the flute channel.com that's yes. right yeah and um follow us on on instagram and also uh leave a leave a like on this video if you're watching it if you're over on uh podcast world go in uh, to apple Podcasts and leave us a five-star review and uh, leave us a little comment maybe we'll read it on the uh on the show and yeah i think that's about it is there anything you would like to add if you're looking for um, um flute method or our version of the paganini you can go on musagi.com soon there's going to be another book and also i was thinking of maybe releasing my cadences that i wrote your cadenzas for my ca cadenzas you say in cadenzas my cadenzas that i wrote for the mozart concertos because in all the in that concerto the three cadenzas uh are my yeah, my yours. own mm -hmm. yeah so yeah. if some people want to learn them i might just put them there yeah um I people want to use them but yeah. you can also compose your own yeah compose your own that's always cool too. cool too yeah so we'll see you guys next uh, month, but we have a couple of videos coming out this month as well, a uh, music video or two and some little things like that. So pay attention to that and uh, go and subscribe to us if you haven't subscribed yet over at uh, our YouTube channel. See you guys. Thanks so much. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye. Or listening. Yeah. <laughs>